Uh, welcome, welcome to the story must be rolled, everybody. To the story must be rolled. Welcome to the story must, must be rolled. Be the rolled. story must be rolled. The story, the story must, must be, be rolled. rolled. The story the must, must be rolled. Be rolled. The story must be rolled. Oh, Thank you for oh, joining we, us. We were having the best conversation. <laughs> I had some of the funniest riffs. I can't do them again. I could try. I could try, but it wouldn't be the same. That's why that I call you quippy long stockings. Just life changing. Funny boy. Ah, <laughs> oh, the story must be rolled. Do you remember that Pippi Longstocking could lift a horse? Was that, that was one of part her of powers? it. That was part of her thing. She was very strong, and she could lift a horse. I knew she could walk up a building as though it were, you know, just ground. You know, just walking yeah, up the walls yeah. that were ground. Yeah, that was not even crouching, just doing that. Yeah. I didn't know she could pick up a horse. Too far fetched for me now. Yeah, a little much. Pippi Longstocking out here sounded like a Mary Sue. <laughs> Is... <laughs> All righty. Are we ready to uh, get started this evening, friends? I'm fresh. I'm hot. I'm I'm ready to dive in like this were a, a pond or a pool. Okay. Devin, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. You're ready, boy. Ready to roll. Are ready, Devin's ready, always boy. ready. Okay. Friends, enemies, congregants, welcome to The Story Must Be Rolled. 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 Oh, like an angelic choir. So, for those of us who do not know, uh, we are going to be playing in the Kids on Bikes rule system. Real simple game. Everybody has got six stats, each one assigned to a different sized die, ranging from a four size to a 20 size, uh, except for Devin, who's got three D4s, two D6s, and one D20 in grit, because he is the universe's packing. punching bag. Just packing. Absolutely. Right. Uh, for anyone who missed last episode, we're going to do a short recap here, but I want to add a little addendum to our rules because of oh. something that happened at the end of last game. Uh, our players have recently awakened some anomalous psychic abilities, which means that they can augment their roles for their various stats with some additional dice. In this case, additional D4s. They get one D4 if they are doing some basic psychic stuff, you know, rudimentary telekinesis, a little bit of mind-to-mind -mind communication. Or if they are doing their funny special thing, uh, such as Reed's character and his abilities revolving around plants, they'll get two D4s. And who knows? Over time, these powers may grow. Are you saying I could have up to three D4s? We'll see how the power curve shakes out, because it's either that or bigger dice. I just want mm. more D4s. If you could give me more dice that are small. <laughs> how, can you do a D1? I guess it would just I, be one. I you wouldn't don't need it. know, actually. Okay, you That's get just a tiddly that. wink. That's just a tiddly wink. It's the same thing on both sides. You get a dice that only has one side, and if you move it, it's it's backwards it's it's interdimensional like flat stanley the book we wrote when we were kids oh absolutely um and for those of us asking in chat uh sister callista is actually out this evening it was a sad thing but we wanted to get you one this month one way or another mm -hmm. and she was so grateful as to say go on without me I'm a I'm a mean lady. I don't care about my family. And so far, she's refused to testify against us, even if we hadn't done anything wrong. So we'll give you her address at the end of the uh, the session today, if you want to write her letters to keep her spirits up while she's in the clink on our behalf. We're going to be passing around the collection pan for bail money. So uh, make mm -hmm. sure to watch for that during the show. It's we only need thirty dollars, really. Really, it was a very small misdemeanor. Yeah, all of us yeah. have it personally, but if you start reaching into your own pockets to bail out a friend, when are you? Where's the line? Reach into the coffers. Where That's what it? they're there for. 
I go, I, I stole a Google Pixel too. Um, and <laughs> are we recording? We're not. Let's take it back. Can we take this back? I, I think it's live, Pastor Andrew. Okie doke. Okie doke. Let's just Skitting. cross our little fingers and beg the story that there's no police in the audience right now. All right. So with all that established, should we launch into our recap? Yes. Let's do it. Excellent, excellent. So our story takes place in the town of Thundering Hills, Ohio. Uh, a very small rural town uh, in which some very strange happenings are being put into play. Our heroes of the story are Andrew, who's your character? Tough Boyman, the toughest guy in, in town from the big city of Toledo. Excellent. Um, Ohio. Toledo, Ohio, <laughs> indeed. Uh, Brother Reed, who are you playing? My name is Tuggy Rubcorn. I am a 17-year-old boy, but primarily, I am a farmer. Absolutely, he is. And surprisingly, there's a very large Tuggy fan base, which I did not expect. Not that I don't love him, just people Everyone really- Everyone loves a little Tuggy. A little Tuggy <laughs> before they go to bed. A little Tuggy when they wake up. Tuggy's a popular, a popular friend. Oh, indeed he is. Uh, our absentee jailbird, Callista, uh, was playing Tabitha, a uh, erstwhile and quirky young lady uh, with several secrets in her past. She's so unique. I just got to say that. Real unique flower. Absolutely would have been played by Zoe Deschanel in the movie. Uh, and Devin, who are you playing? I'm playing Devin. To nobody's surprise. He's a sad little boy wandering around uh, who's now invisible sometimes. Sometimes, indeed. Um, the adventure began for these characters when they were all taken in a field trip to the Thundering Hills Historical Preservation Society, where they got to learn about such interesting things as local politics and coal. It was during this journey that one of their classmates, a boy by the name of Jace, approached Tough Boyman. And Tough, do you remember what he asked you to procure from the back room of the Historical Preservation Society? Uh, I got the memory of a goldfish. I got too many, too many strands. I'm running numbers between the cars, running girls between the bars. Uh... I think I need a little bit of a refresher on that one. I can tell you right now, it was a can of tab. Ah, but specifically <laughs> the mythical because I was tab. promised seventy-five cents for my good work because I would not drink one myself, and I could put it towards the surgery for my dog. Ah, of course, uh, Tuggy's poor pup. Uh, tad, tad, a beautiful woman of a dog, Tad. Ah. The party all slipped into the back of the museum. Uh, and once they got back there and began attempting to extricate the crystal tab from the machine, Devin, do you remember what else they found back there? A dead guard. No, that came later. <laughs> that, that came, came later. later. Oh, they found like... um. It was a. Uh, it was kind of like a, uh, a a box. It was a box, indeed. And within that box was a strange sort of stone idol, which everyone seemed to wishy washy over whether they were going to touch it or not. Before Tuggy was actually the first person to go ahead and grab it. I was which... tired of uh, of the the Philly philandering. Touch the idol and get, let me get my my seventy five cents, please. Indeed, and. When you did touch that idol, you felt this emanation of bizarre warping energy that seemed to grip each of your minds. This sequence of no doubt uh, eldritch machination 
was immediately followed by some distinctly un-Devon, like high charm rolls from Devon to try and cover up your teenage misdeeds. I could uh, be a smooth talker. Sometimes, man, sometimes. Though this was immediately followed up by a brutal assault with a paint can uh, against an erstwhile museum worker by the name of Quentin Kirk, who was- Now it's coming back to me. Yep. <laughs> you, you remember the guy with the lovebirds that you all brutalized mm -hmm. and then robbed mm -hmm. once he was unconscious. I didn't get my 75 cents, I needed more. They say that the violence of this game caused Sister Callista to commit her crime to steal that pixel too. Oh, absolutely. Narrative-based, story-driven tabletop games are the menace of society. Mm. That's what they were talking about with the, the, the devil scare of the 80s. They were afraid all these tabletops were going to make children go out and steal, steal the Google pixels. <laughs> The rest of you guys' evening after your museum heist passed somewhat uneventfully. Uh, though later that evening, you each had a shared dream of being chased through dark catacombs pursued by a green miasmic light while Walk Like an Egyptian played very slowly in the background. And when each of you awoke, you had had a blooming of these extraordinary abilities. Uh, Pastor Andrew, do you remember what happened to your house? Or I should got I say the top memory. Size? I got the memory of a goldfish. Uh, you awoke to find space warped completely around you. All objects and living creatures nearby you, uh, either blown up to fantastic proportions or shrunk down to minuscule sizes. Correct. Uh, Brother Reed, do you remember what happened to Tuggy's room? Peggy's room was largely unchanged if you looked at the furniture. The People magazine was still under the pillow. The soybeans and the corn were still wafting outside, but what was different was that the soybeans and the corn had also come inside. They had become a part of the surroundings as though a, a creature responding to my call as a, a friendly pup, a pup which is now in the hospital because of a, a uterus infection. Indeed. Oh, Tad. Oh, poor Tad. And uh, Devin, what happened to you? Uh, I woke up and uh, I had uh, no reflection. Um, I woke up in my dog bed. There was no reflection. She felt pretty on the nose. I have some notes <laughs> to, you know, the big man, as they say. But uh, yeah. Completely invisible, and I felt a I felt an immense uh, relief wash over me. Yes, it was a rather beautiful scene, and uh, I will answer for Callista, as she is not here. Uh, but Sister Callista's character Tabitha had awakened some sort of ability related to the air and had unleashed a sort of miniature hurricane in the surroundings around her home, which had put her toy Corvette through the wall. That'll do it. Fun stuff. Now. Let's jump into the game. And I think we'll start off with Tough. Tough Boyman, after your dream and your bizarre awakening, uh, how did, has this affected your morning routine? Uh, my teeth are way bigger. When I'm brushing my teeth, I, uh, again, the, the mirror is gigantic. Uh, I don't need to eat as much. I can, instead of getting a bowl of Cheerios, shrink myself down and munch on just one of them. And then when I expand once again, it is, uh, I'm more full. So already I'm thinking the money I'm going to save in groceries is going to be off the charts. Um, I can sneak through the, the mouse holes in my, in my walls uh, because I live in a cartoon house and so my mom got a discount on it. And <laughs> when I'm real little looking up at the posters I have of Toledo, Ohio, I'll tell you what, the skyscrapers look even bigger. Those things are making the clouds bleed. So I use it to just foster my own sense of homesickness. Oh, you poor thing. As time goes on, it seems like the spatial warps around you begin to die down a little bit as things begin to stabilize. Uh, your mother is sitting in the exact same place that she has been sitting for, God, it feels like years now. 
at the table, over full ashtray in front of her, cigarette hanging off of her lips. Uh, and your little brother, uh, Bruiser, if I remember correctly. Bruiser. Bruiser. And your little brother, Bruiser Bruiser Charles, Bruiser Charles Boyman, named after my dad. His real name was Big Bruiser. And we are getting some more. Yeah, we're Armenian. Armenian. (laughs) Big Bruiser. It's spelled the way you think. X, uh, squiggle, uh, squiggle, and then the emoji of the arm. Bruiser Boyman. I hope you all are writing this down because I am delighted. (laughs) Uh, Yes. Young Bruiser Boyman comes downstairs after you, uh, also unchanged by your uh, seemingly overbearing psychic powers, uh, and almost entirely unaware of the goings on of last night. Mm. I assume you go through your usual morning routine with him. Mm. Make sure he's ready to go. I've already eaten my Cheerio, so I'm pretty stuffed. That'll probably carry me through the day. I make sure my boy eats. I change my mom's cigarette and then I help him out with his insulin. He's a good kid. He just gets a little bit grumpy. And if he doesn't drink orange juice, he will die. He is a sweet kid. Uh, Tuggy, how has your morning routine changed with this newfound discovery? I have no time for these powers and I have no time to reckon with what it has brought to my life. The farm needs to be attended to and I find that my work is a little more swift. As I walk through the field of corn, they do part and bow before me. A few of them, uh, I hear them mutter and I, and I whisper to them, quiet now, work must be done. To the soybeans, I start the harvester and though I am technically not old enough to die for my country, I could die as my mother did plowing down the soybeans. It is a tremendous machine. And I do find it curious that as I run over the soybeans, in their wake, uh, it's as though I haven't cut them down at all. The soybeans continue to grow right up behind it. And it makes me feel like I'm going goo goo bananas. I, I, I don't know how to do this farming if it never ends. Uh, what is endless bounty, if not a source of madness for one who derives their satisfaction from a job well done? All I'm thinking is, goodness, and I still have to go to algebra later. Such is the life of a farming teenager. Uh, As you do your second pass around the yard with the soybean harvester, your father, uh, Mm. Papa Rubcorn, comes stumbling out onto the back porch, uh, eyes still bandaged from his experimental LASIK eye surgery. I believe he, it's uh, pronounced the sick. <laughs> his LASIK eye surgery. He's French. Uh, he stops at the back porch. Tuggy! Tuggy, is that you? Papa, yes. Who else would be harvesting the soybeans at this time of year but me, your son, Tuggy? Well, boy, you better be getting to school now. Yeah, jump in the pickup and I'll drive you down to the schoolyard. Father, you know that would be a a folly. You cannot drive with your eyes so depleted by that French experimental surgery. Doctor Lissick, I blame you for submitting it. You say in years it will be ready, but I I don't think it's ready yet. Nonsense, boy. You just tell me when to turn left and turn right and hit the brake and we'll be good to go. The fourth commandment is obey your father and mother. And as I obey the call of the field, so do do I obey my father. Into the car we go, father. All right. And uh, as your father drives you to school, absolutely hurtling down the street blind, listening to your stammered directions, uh, we move over to Devin. Uh, Devin, how does your morning routine change with the discovery of your powers? Well, first things first, I do what anyone would do if they suddenly woke up and they were invisible. Oh, yeah. I poop with the door open. 
<laughs> doors open. The doors open, and I'm pooping. I'm looking right out the door. I can see outside. In it's... your house that would be empty anyway. Yes. But you never know. When people can see you, you never know. So you got to close that door. You want to lock it, even if you're by yourself. The second thing I do is I go scare people in hospice. <laughs> Very spooky. Easy to spook crowd. Wow. They don't know what's going on. I just move their, I move their clocks around. I pull, their, I pull their covers off really quick. They think it's the devil. They to be fair, Devin's is. house is connected to the hospice. <laughs> there is yeah, a it was the hospice, and then they moved the hospice, and yeah, they I got to move into that the new space. Everyone at the hospice said, "All right, move one room over," and then they they left the other, and then they hung a for rent sign out of the uh, <laughs> out of the, the empty one, and I jumped on it. There, there's a cabinet in the kitchen that leads to a cabinet in the hospice. It's, it's like the wardrobe to Narnia. Being John That's Mel Aspis. A sad Narnia. <laughs> Such a yeah. depressing Narnia. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Devin, you spend the morning scaring the bejesus out of people who are at an extremely low point in their lives. Yes. Yeah, but then I balance it out by going through, I go down to the central business district and I stand in the middle of the sidewalk, busy sidewalk, and all the businessmen walk through me and they get a, they get a pee shiver. <laughs> a pee shiver. Yeah. Once when an invisible person, when you walk through an invisible person, you get a pee shiver. <laughs> they know something happened. And then it's time to go to school. What a life you live, Devin. <laughs> yes. Emphatically, yes. So miraculously. Uh, you three boys all make it to Hills High High School at around the same time. Uh, I'm going to say, Devin, you're probably the last one to arrive. And you can see uh, Tough walking up with Bruiser. Uh, Tough, do you hold your brother's hand when you walk together? Big time. Excellent. Big time. I hold him by the hand and then I hold him by the scruff of the neck to make a, to make sure I still look a little bit tough, but it's only because he has a very weak neck. I'm holding his head up and it's kind of like a, it's like a ventriloquist dummy. If we see, if we see some broad, I go like that and he'll talk. <laughs> That's something you, you don't know about diabetes. Your neck doesn't work. I don't think he has diabetes, to be honest. I think he I has think a serious there, neck problem. There might be something more going on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big time, big time. But I hate to be wrong. Yeah, uh, and just at and the I'm same covered time. in piss on my way to <laughs> on my way in. I got this little bit of a shiver and just <laughs> grease lightning right down the trousers. Oh, you can see my <laughs> my Levi's is soaked. Oh, poor boy. It happens a lot. I don't think it was Devin. <laughs> no, not unless you're in the central business district. Mm -mm, it was cold and I sneezed. It's all it takes. <laughs> <laughs> I have diabetes too. <laughs> that's how it works yeah you, so, your neck is broke you piss real hard so bruiser boyman has a weak neck and tough boyman has a weak urethra good to big know. time big time so weak uh it's like tissue paper in a sandstorm the imagery uh i'm talking and... limp and then here comes tuggy in the rusty old rubcorn mobile as it peels into the parking lot and very nearly demolishes a small group of cheerleaders. Uh, I am before... shouting as fast as I can. Reduce speed to four miles per hour. There is a bump reduced to two miles per hour. Increase back up to four miles per hour. Let's not get silly. Turn left, turn left. Uh, parallel park, parallel park. The, oh, keep paralleling the brake pads which have not been changed in five years shriek <laughs> under the weight of your father's boots as the truck comes to a stop and you are unceremoniously booted out onto the curb thank you father for the ride i am old enough to drive myself but it's these times with you that i cherish how will you get home Oh, don't worry, boy. 
I'll divine my direction by the scent of corn on the wind. Godspeed, Father. And I, I don't mean to be a bother, but I should point out, I think you might have urinated yourself just a little bit. Oh, uh, when we swung through the central business district, I did get a bit of a pee shiver. That will happen sometimes. I'm getting to that age. You don't worry none about it, Tuggy. <sighs> what this- pain befalls a 36-year-old man? This Have a good day at no. school, my little my little seedling. Goodbye, buggy rub corn, my father. <laughs> buggy. I'm just oh, excited that we're getting down to the origin story of the piss boys. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's a piss boy. Uh, your father reaches across, slams the door, and peels off again, fully blowing out one wheel's worth of suspension as he takes like a speed bump at 40 miles an hour and zips out of the parking lot. And at this moment, the piss boys converge. Oh, I didn't think I'd see you all here. I don't know why we've been going to this school for a while. Um, I like seeing you. It reminds me of yesterday when we first truly bonded. I had an unusual morning. You know what? Oh, I had an unusual morning. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, oh, you, Devin. At this point, so it, when uh, when right around the time school starts is when I'm kind of taking shape again. So. I'm not walking because I'm not fully formed. I'm dragging my body up to them because, you know, I've got like half a half a right leg, three-fourths of a left leg, and it's still mm-hmm. forming, for, like still coming in, no arms, mm-hmm. scooting around like a, like a caterpillar on the, uh, on the parking lot. So I'm trying to get their attention. Oh, oh, Devin- oh, hold on a minute. I'm talking to my new friend. Devin seems to... That to not have really pulled things back as much as y'all have. Uh, I will say Devin is passably visually still a human being, Uh, but there is definitely like some insubstantiality. It's it's very difficult to look at Devin below the knees and not for the usual reasons. Uh, (laughs) Just like like real life. life. It's like when the kids come back from being the Capri Sun. It's like uh, it's like your mind tries to focus on those sweet, sweet little Devon feet, and it just deflects off, and you're looking back at his face again. Huh. Honestly, that's, really that's, easy to make. That's my AIM, my AIM screen name is Sweet Sweet Devon Feet, four twenty, <laughs> four twenty. Oh, once once AIM is invented, I think. That'll be a I got good a mind one. Full of ideas. It's it's pigeons. You teach pigeons I... not to send messages, but to yap. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> you up to your knees in pigeons in Toledo, Ohio. Oh, those yappy little pigeons. Uh, as the three of you converge, the bell rings, and you are summoned to your first period class. Uh, and Tuggy, just as you dreaded, it's algebra. Oh no. They tell me that these numbers are letters and that these letters are numbers, but I was taught to distinguish between the two long ago and I didn't think I had to modify my learning. Truly, what kind of school is this? Every year I come back and the curriculum continues to confound me. <laughs> uh, I'm attending algebra class and... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm thinking about the soybeans. The three of you sit down in algebra class. Uh, you do note that uh, Tabitha, who would usually be here, ha- is not present today. Uh, hmm. Though, as I believe this is before the advent of cell phones, uh, you'd really have no way to contact her normally. At least from your current position. Hmm. 
It oh, feels like a phone's we... ringing inside my brains. Oh, are you attempting to are you attempting to perform an action? And reach out. Mm, 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 no, I just smoked a ton of cigarettes before I left. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait. Well, no, it's cigarettes. Ah, uh, of course. It's those menthols. Mmm. I like cool, minty flavor. As you all settle in for Mrs. Hot Thoughts uh, algebra class. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, you did this. Hell yeah. <laughs> What's her name? Hot Thoughts? Hot uh, Thoughts. Hot Thoughts. It's spelled H-A-T-F-A-H-T-S. Hot Thoughts. Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Hotfots is a, uh, she's a, she's a rotund woman with like a beehive hairdo and this sort of like shapeless black and white dress that terminates. Far side comic. Yeah, like a far side (laughs) comic, uh, that terminates just above what have to be the smallest, like the smallest feet you've ever seen on a human being. It does not look like she should be able to balance. That's why my AOL instant messenger screen name is Hot Fots Tiny Feet. Little tiny little peckers. <laughs> Whenever we come out with the pigeons, the yap, I'll continue on. Keep going, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, but yeah, she... She uh, comes into the room with her very tiny tip tapping footfalls, like a little beetle scuttling across the floor. Uh, and once she arrives, she reaches for a piece of chalk and is about to start speaking to the class when she is immediately cut off by the sound of the PA system as the principal of Hills High begins to make an announcement. Uh, the start of the announcement is silent at first, but then you realize, can each of you give me a brains roll, actually? Do I just hit the modifier? Uh, yeah, just, uh, just punch in brains. I have brains. I just... No modifier. Yet. Oh, uh, oh, no modifier. That's right. Sorry. Okay. Bear with me. Boom. It's okay. Hey, it's I don't. Work. I don't get this. I still have a rotary phone at home. <laughs> uh, you have six brains. No worries. Okay, so cows uh, just... have six brains. That's how they eat all that grass. Hey, perfect. Okay, so everyone passed the threshold of five. So you can hear that very quietly in the background. You can hear the sound of someone chugging out of a bottle. Oh yeah. Uh, and then the sound of like a heavy glass bottle hitting a table. <sighs> Good morning, children. It is with a terrible heaviness in my heart that I announce that four of your fellow students have gone missing. <gasps> For a moment, I think it might be me and and my friends that I recall where we are at school. Brandy Moore, Preston Brooks, Zachariah Dominguez, and Mikey Wachowski. Not Wachowski! (laughs) Have all been reported missing. The county sheriff from out of town has stopped in to begin the investigation and will be popping into each classroom today in order to make a statement and introduce himself to you wonderful little angels. Oh, I can only imagine what horrible things have befallen them. They must be spiraling down into such a dark place, just like I did after my Bitch, ex-wife as a Bella left me. And that is when the PA cuts out for a solid 30 seconds and comes on a moment later. <sighs> Sorry about that, children. Keep an eye out for the sheriff and 
have a good day. Just remember, I love you. Uh, uh, and the PA clicks off. Uh, Mrs. Hotfatz, who has had her <laughs> arms crossed this entire time, just says, Well, now that that's out of the way, we can get back to the math. Now, can anyone tell me what A squared plus B squared equals? I raise my hand. Rob Con? I would like to be excused. For I don't what know reason? the answer to this question. And I'm afraid, Miss Hafas, I never will. I am a farmer. And though they say some math is required to calculate the arithmetic of the fields, it is not this math. You're fooling yourself, and I'm fooling myself if I say I should stay here any longer. I woke up a different boy than when I went to sleep last night. And I could say that most days, but today I mean it. Miss Hotfots, we have no time for this. Rob Korn, you put the seat of those overalls back in your chairs this instant. The fifth commandment, obey your teacher. I sit down. Good boy. And I'm look then I'm looking around all nervous, like if there's a sheriff coming here, I can't be caught with what I'm packing. And so I slip out from my back pocket a switchblade comb, put it back in, <laughs> and make Devin hold it for me. Uh ooh, that's a uh, hold on. I feel like that requires a roll here. Mm. Um I can't get caught with this. I'm not going back. Okay. No, no. I uh, I will say that because this is you trying to do some street tough type stuff, mm. go ahead and roll grit. As long as I can still hold on to the knife that I stabbed a man with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to say difficulty of four. Go ahead and roll that Boom. grit. Boom. Hey. Suck it. Smashed it. Uh, so, Devin. The bing. I take the knife because I think it's a comb. <laughs> uh, yeah, you are past this deadly implement and hide it on no, your person. No, it's a comb. <laughs> oh, it is actually it a, is comb. a comb. It's just very convincing. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very, very convincing. It's a very convincing comb. How about I run it through my receding hairline, even as a boy? <laughs> really quick, um, just, to, just to see how it feels. Okay, and go ahead it. and give me a flight roll with a difficulty of three to try and conceal this action. I'm, I'm setting the difficulty low because there's not much hair to come. Hey, okay, easily done. So you slick that right through your hair. Not bad. I'm going to say on your next charm roll and hold me to this, I'm going to give you a plus one Love because it. your hair's looking nice. <laughs> just a little bit of blood. Oh, just a little bit of blood rises from your very paper thin scalp. Yeah. So you're hanging out with all those schmucks in uh, in hospice. They cough the chemo <laughs> right into you. You should see this guy's fingernails pop off like tiddlywinks. Alrighty. So about 15 minutes worth of algebra class passes. And these names are sort of weighing on you guys. Uh, Devin, you being the punching bag for a lot of the popular kids at this school, uh, you actually did know almost all of those kids. Uh, Preston was a huge bully and a total tool. Uh, Brandy was just an incredible bitch and treated you poorly any second that she was around you. Uh, but Mikey was actually like one of the only cool jocks. Like he wouldn't stop people from shoving you in a trash can, but he would pull you out of the trash can afterwards. I just want to be clear, this man, has, this boy has the same name as the small green monster from Monsters, Inc., right? Yes. Okay. Oh, no, no. You're thinking of Mike Wazowski. This is Mikey Wachowski. Wachowski. Oh, okay, okay. okay yeah, okay. there's a dub. There's a, there's a Y in there. Got it. Reframing. Um, yeah. Uh, Tuggy. Yeah, I didn't like any of those, any of those, those, those people because they all slept with my dad before. <laughs> We've all learned a lot about everyone's dads. Whoa! Whoa! A good riddance. 
I'll spit on the sheriff if he comes talk comes to talk to me. <laughs> Sorry. Wow, that one got me. Um, it's canon Tuggy. now. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be. <laughs> uh, Tuggy, you weren't actually super familiar with any of them because a lot of them were like part of the popular crowd, but you did actually bump into Zach once or twice and bonded over the fact that both of you are kind of geeks for very particular niche stuff and both of your dads are blind because of lasik eye surgery lasik i believe it's pronounced lasik of course uh yes there were two dads gone blind by the experimental surgery you know they don't even have lasers yet they haven't gone that far it's just they cut open the retina and then they shine a flashlight in there and they shine it for hours and they just hope at the end of it they've done something and they flip it back and it's already dried oh dried out like a little ritz cracker so yes we did bond for zach no oh, yeah. he does not tend to a farm he does not know the way the, the stalk of corn bends with the wind it ripples as though dancing with a partner I cannot see. Though perhaps... But he knows a struggle of mine. Yeah. Perhaps if you two had been closer friends, you could have taught him such things. Uh, and finally, Tough. I wouldn't say you were particularly close with any of them, though mm -mm. I imagine Never you at least... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never met any of them. I Never mind. <laughs> no, oh. no, I, I do. I don't know nothing, okay. though. <laughs> I'm going to say that at the very least, you are aware of Preston as he is sort of like the big guy at school. And I imagine the tough has like the prison mentality of, OK, mm -hmm. I just got to punch the big guy at some point and then people will yes. respect me. And I sell him acid. Correct. Yes, absolutely. That's where yes. he got it. Yes. Now, a little while into you guys's first period, uh, someone enters the room uh, a tall thin severe man in a almost vanta black suit with a white undershirt and matching black tie uh, sort of like thin on the ground brownish blonde hair that is so like laser straight that it looks like it's not actually hair and might just be clipped onto his head uh, and most notably his face is very serious and set, but his nose is tweaked ever so slightly to the side as though it was horribly mangled at some point and never quite healed right. Uh, but as this man enters the room, uh, Mrs. Hotfots immediately falls silent. Watching you ever so slightly break, Pastor Andrew, every time I say that brings me endless it's joy. It's not slight. It's not slight <laughs> is the thing. <laughs> Uh, but she falls immediately silent as this man enters and confidently walks to the front of the room. Hello, children. My name is Agent, uh, pardon me, uh, Sheriff Carruthers. Nothing. Make a charm roll. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Okay, not bad. Hey. So, he like narrows his eyes at you and then continues speaking. Uh, I would like each of you to make a brains roll real quick. Uh, we're going to say difficulty of five here. Six is... <laughs> Oof. Okay, so uh, Devin and uh, Tough, go ahead and take an adversity token each. But Tuggy, you can 100% tell this man is not a county sheriff. He's got like some major men in black energy right here. I recall knowing all the county sheriffs. Mm, this man is I know not this one man. of them. Also, he's not dressed like a sheriff. Also, he said his name was Agent at first. So oh, there's many variables to cast this doubt asunder. 
Hmm. Well, myself and the other county sheriffs are going to be posting here in your town in order to look for your missing classmates. You can expect to see our vehicles around town. Do not panic. We are only here to help. And the smile that this man gives you is so full of spiders and deceit that it is worthy of the Grinch himself. I trust this guy. Uh, yes, you there, balding child. What happened to your nose? <laughs> there was an incident with a dog. You should see the dog. I knew it. I've seen a dog before. What about it should we see? Was it a nice dog? Was it a big dog? I'm sorry. I I don't know you very well, sir, but I have a dog, and that dog is sick. I'll, I'll be quiet now. You just talked about a dog, and you can't do that in front of a boy who's having a hard time. Um, can't do it. I'm, I'm not even going to make you roll for that. You can tell that this man severely regrets coming here. Um, just, you shouldn't. You should be careful talking about dogs. You never know who's really sad about a dog. And since they're saying funny shit, I go, "Your <laughs> butt looks dumb." Make a charm roll, please. <laughs> I was gonna say a difficulty of like four. Oh my Ooh. god! Uh, yeah, destructive charm. From Everyone's our... cracking the fuck up. I yeah. just ripped this guy. <laughs> you weird butt. Weird, like... butt. weird, weird butt. butt. Weird 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 butt. The entire class starts losing it. Uh, <laughs> the entire class starts losing it. And during this during this exchange, uh, Sheriff, Sheriff Carruthers simply just maintains like eye contact in your direction he reaches into his pocket uh which jostles his suit enough that you can see that he has an underarm gun holster uh, pulls out a little notepad jots something down with a golf pencil and tucks it back yo Devin, give me that comb <laughs> i'm going to be holding a personal meeting with all the students that uh went on the field trip down to the Historical Preservation Society yesterday, uh, as there was actually a break-in, robbery, and assault that occurred there. Uh, don't worry, it's going to be a simple routine inter interview. Yes, uh, dog boy. I have a name. Um, what if we had nothing to do with it, sir? <laughs> well, then you have nothing to fear. So I can go home? As much as I would love to avoid having to have an extended conversation with you, it is part of my job. Hey, Tuggy. Yes? I think he's talking about the thing we did with Devin. <laughs> Tuggy! <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. I just have a problem talking at a different volume. So you understand, I, I don't try but often abstain from whispering. Okay. Um, okay. At, at this point, Mrs. Hotfots like notes that you two are like, <laughs> whispering to each other and just goes, shh. Nothing. I will also note that while our investigation is being conducted, there is going to be a 6 p.m. curfew. Uh, I don't want to see any ne'er-do-wells out on the streets while we are attempting to track down what is more than likely a Serial killer and or serial kidnapper. Be wary, children. And have a nice day. Wow, he, he stares... floated the idea that the kids were all dead pretty quick. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but he he suggested they were all they were all killed. Oh, I yeah. would say that it's subtlety wild. is not one of his strong points, no. no. Th this man absolutely has zero regard for the feelings of others in this moment, like when talking about this subject, which Tuggy, you would note, is not something that a typical county sheriff would have. 
It's not something Ron would do, Greg, Dick, or Chippy. Greg, Dick, yeah, and Chippy. Chippy. You know, the Ch- local Ch- county. Ch- Chip, Chippy. 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 I'm sorry. I, ha- I have to write this down because you're making this canon now. Greg, He's Dick, Italian. and Chippy? Greg, Dick, Ron, and Chippy. They're the four sheriffs I know. Chippy Chippy. got hit by a truck real bad, so he can't say his name right. That's why they had to change it. Oh, my God. (laughs) He just says Chippy anymore. It was a real bad accident. He's Italian. Yeah. Didn't uh, didn't throw off his aim, though. Still got a nose like a bloodhound. Just really only saying Chippy nowadays. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. Is there uh, anything that you gentlemen want to accomplish before I think we would be going on our quick 10 minute break soon enough? Um, Five minutes. I would like to use the bathroom in the story itself. Okay. Uh, At this point, Mrs. Hotpots is sick of you and will allow you to go to the restroom. Uh, I walk down the halls. I run my hands down the lockers. Oh, what a day to be a boy. Mm -hmm. What a rough day to be a young man. Some days are hard, but today's worse than other. I'm saying this all out loud. Uh, As you're running your fingers down your locker, you actually get to your locker. Oh, my locker. It is ever so slightly. 522. Indeed. And number 522 is ever so slightly open. Huh. When you distinctly remember closing it all the way. I distinctly remember closing it all the way. I pull it open a little bit. Um, sitting in the dark recesses of your locker, amidst all the corn and soybean paraphernalia, mm-hmm. is that bizarre stone statue from the museum yesterday. I don't recall this being here before. You see that broken humanoid figure statue with the strange snake-like trunks coming off of its torso, Mm. the bird-like taloned feet, Ah. the four arms, and that face covered by the broken moth wings. And it appears to have ended up in your possession, despite being what is more than likely being looked for by that uh, sketchy sheriff guy. I don't normally talk to statues, but I will say this directly to you. I don't remember having you. Did you follow me? As you speak. Speak now or hold your peace. The statue ever so slightly turns (laughs) where it is sitting. And I think that gives us a perfect moment to take a five minute break. Thank you.
Oh yeah. Oh baby, we're back on the back, back and on hot the clock. Back and hot and ready to. F- <laughs> <laughs> the grease is back in the pan, boys. It's here. Grease never left the pan. It just got thick. Hmm. Alrighty, so let's jump back into our little story here. So, uh, as it seems to have been mentioned and even demanded in the chat, uh, I am going to need Tuggy to roll to piss. I don't know what you're going to need to roll for that. Hey, hey, uh, to what's this guy doing roll in the hallway? He ain't even in the bathroom. I, I'm going to say I need to roll uh, grit. Go ahead and roll me some grit. I'm going to say, yes. you, you've you been doing this a lot. Give me a, a, a roll of three or higher. <laughs> Fourteen. <laughs> I piss like I've been doing it my whole life. Just absolutely obliterating. Got a stream I, that can cut stone. That's why I like this guy. Porcelain, look out I do look this out funny when he's trick. I, can, I don't even need my hands for any of it. By just the thrust and flick of my pelvis, I can undo my belt unbutton my dungarees slip it down and flop my my work against the the porcelain it's flop it's my work against the porcelain that's how we talk about it that was the uh, name of my high school band's first ep actually <laughs> um so after your trip to the bathroom uh do you check your locker again on the way back? You know, check your locker one time, get a statue. Shame on you. Check a locker a second time and get a statue. Shame on the statue. I check it. Uh, the statue is actually gone. Shame on the statue. Uh, you make your way back to the classroom. Uh, where as soon as you enter, Mrs. Hotpots is immediately just like, what took you so long, huh? Well, you should know the actual act happened very efficiently. But I admit I... I've got big, heavy feelings, Mrs. Hotpots. Are you married? I I don't know. Is there a Mr. Hotpots? Unfortunately. Oh, (laughs) the humor of a married couple i don't know about this my mother died when she gave birth to me she just sort of like rubs the bridge of her nose rub corn back to your seat fifth commandment i take a seat uh as you go back to your seat your foot bumps your backpack which is now significantly heavier than it used to be And with an odd-shaped object inside. Uh Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Uh-oh, that's all I can say. Yeah, seems like you may be a little bit haunted. Oh, mercy on me. Is that the statue? I'm... Uh, You take a little Um, peek in your backpack and... I want to take just a little peek. There it is. Right in between your social studies workbook and your uh, English paper. Uh, Well, I better not change any of the words on my English paper to love a mockingbird, an essay by Tuggy Rubcorn. Great book. Oh... I turn to a tough boyman, and I'm like, "Does it smell like statue in here?" I was thinking that. I was thinking that exactly. Right. It smells like statue, mm. like microwaved statue. It smells like around. statue. It smells like statue in here. It smells like statue in here. I We're turn fucked. around. We're going upstate, boys. Have any of you had sudden statue happen? And then, and then the walls pull away from the classroom. Hi, I'm George Clooney. Do you suffer from sudden statue, sudden statue. syndrome? And then it goes right back. And I'm like, oh, my powers. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
You have the psychic ability to summon George Clooney for an advertisement. <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, story. So, Tuggy, what do you do with this newfound information? Do you disseminate this amongst your your uh, comrades in crime? Or do you try I and turned keep this around and I, I, to I told him. Mm -hmm. Did anyone have a statue? And I, I hoped that they inferred that I had. I had a Sutton statue. And I, and I say, you know how it is. You're in a classroom. You're going to get called up to the board. And all of a sudden, uh-oh, you get a Sutton statue. And you're afraid all the kids are going to see your statue. And you're like, I don't know if I can tuck it into my pants or not. Bad case of Sutton statue, especially when we're going to talk to a sheriff. Hmm. So that's what they called in the 80s. Sudden statue syndrome. I don't want this. Please, one of you, can you take the statue? You know what? I'll be brave. I'm going to take the statue. Here, Devin, hold the statue. <laughs> yes. I take the statue. Okay. Thank you for taking it, included. Tough. You got it. I'm brave. Uh, so brave, Tough. Devin is now mm. holding all like of you guys' you contraband. Mm-hmm. Oh, hold on, hold on. I think we're having a moment here. What's that? I think we're having a moment here. I heard that. Uh huh. Yeah, I like the I like the way, I like the way he smells. I like the way he comes back from the bathroom all high on the hog. I like his confidence. <laughs> I like his sudden statues. I, I'm starting to warm up to this guy, and I don't trust no one. See? Yeah. Wait a minute. Is he just saying this to himself internally, or is this? Out loud this is a way. soliloquy. Just like the George <laughs> Clooney commercial, I turn around and a single spotlight comes out on me. And I address the Zoom audience like this. And then I sing. Please make a charm roll, if you would. I'm singing a uh, broken uh, You can take these broken wings and learn to fly again together, be so free. I roll a three. <laughs> Go ahead and take an adversity token for that one. Damn it. Uh, the extra spatial audience that you're performing for uh, is not having it. <laughs> and I'll be honest. At first, I thought I was going to reciprocate all these feelings, but there was something just a little sour in the notes he was singing where I'm kind of like, ooh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I know I'm, charming. I'm a farmer, but that wasn't too charming. Could <laughs> I be friends with this guy? Even I don't know. He's from Toledo. Learn We're very to fly again, again to be so free. After Mrs. Hot Fox's class uh, <laughs> finishes, you did this. Remember this. Crazy about it. Uh, after the class concludes, uh, you three are actually summoned to a meeting room within the school uh, where Agent Carruthers, sorry, Sheriff Carruthers, is actually waiting for you. Uh, he's set up a desk with four chairs in front of it, uh, which he is sitting behind, uh, absentmindedly click, click, clicking a pen. While he's got a mostly filled out notepad in front of him. It seems you are not his first interview this evening. And then I go, hey, Devin, hold on to this. And I pull out a medieval mace from my back pocket and make him hold it for me. I'm going to need one of the two of you to make a flight roll to, <laughs> to unnoticed pass this mace. Are okay. twos good? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> Devin, you go ahead. Hold on, and hold on. It. I hit fight. I hit fight. Let's try flight. Oh. And whichever one is higher, we're going to go with. It seems both of you actually hit. Oh, uh, we both hit. <laughs> okay, so hit flight real quick. Go yeah, ahead Devin, go. Wow. Oh, no, it got worse. <laughs> it got worse. Kidding? A one? Is it mathematically? I don't know math. What am I talking about? I, <laughs> I believe for you, it's a one in four chance. <laughs> uh, all right. Both of you take an adversity token. Uh, as fully the mace is dropped on the ground and one of the like large sort of protruding spiked portions is now stuck in the linoleum floor. Nothing. 
Uh, from beyond the slightly cracked doorway, the sheriff uh, beckons the three of you in. Boys, come in, sit down. I was under the impression that there were four of you in your group. Or at least that's what uh, Mrs. Cox told me. Mm. Mm, that's um, a funny name. I don't know anything about numbers. Mm. Are you talking about... No, I, no, you're not. I'm not going to bring it up. I'm not going to say her name. Hey, Nick. Tuggy. <laughs> I think they're talking about Tabitha. <laughs> Tabitha? Uh, I try not to say it out loud because, as I said, I have problems controlling a, a whisper tone. The sheriff makes a note down onto his notepad. I'll have to make a house call later today, then. Please, sit down, boys. Tuggy, you blew it. Uh, do you three have your bags with you while you're here? Uh, why? Just out of curiosity. Are I, don't got a bag. I don't got a bag, but I carry all my books by a belt. Ah, of course. <laughs> I like those cool kids like Matt Dillon do in movies. Yeah, that's why I skipped to school. Big city kids got a lot to teach us dirt folk. <laughs> dirt folk. <laughs> Whoa. That's what <laughs> farmers call themselves. You'd know if you were a farmer. Only real dirt folk know. I'm a muddy brother. I'm a I'm a soil. I'm a soil boy. I thought we were the piss boys. You have your identity and I have who I was born. I'm sorry to deny you, Tuff, but <laughs> this is... Sir, Mr. Sheriff, I have a matter I'd like to address with you. Is your name Ron? Is your name Greg? Is your name... Kepi. <laughs> uh, he looks at you and just sort of like cocks his head to the side. Kepi. Do you Get mean to ask me if I am Sheriff Greg, Sheriff Dick, Sheriff Ron, or Sheriff Cheppy? Yes. Because I think demonstrably not, then I don't know you. I think demonstrably I am not either of those four men, especially not Sheriff Cheppy. He's Italian. Indeed. Are you going to check us for lice? <laughs> Why are we here? The only time I... I'm sitting in the school without books or lunch in front of me is to be checked for lice. Is that what this is? Or scoliosis. Don't forget scoliosis. Or scoliosis right before summertime. I am not to exclude you from the scoliosis checks. It's kind of a popular kids thing. I am not going to be checking anyone for lice nor scoliosis. In fact, I'm actually here to just ask you a small series of questions. Hmm. Can you rub your collective brain cells together enough to answer those? Does that count as a small question? and series kind of counteract each other, sir. Let's just jump right in, shall we? Is that the first question? No, that it's the not... second one. He asked if we could ask questions. That's Look right. That's guy. right. Look at this mug. All right. Only three cops. more. Yeah. I don't either, except for Ron, uh, Sheriff. Uh, what well, Sheriff Ron? I said Cheppy. Cheppy. You know, Cheppy. Dick and uh, Harry, Greg. I believe. Greg, Greg. Greg. Greg or Harry. Harry was a different sheriff I knew growing up. Harry recently got transferred out. I'm actually Harry's replacement. Oh. Well, you should have just said that. All right, I'll answer your questions. Wonderful. So, did you boys go on the museum trip with uh, with Miss Cox's class yesterday? I don't recall. Yes. Fuck. All of us did. Fuck. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Thank you very much, Mr. Tuggy. Hey. I'm going to keep lying, so just lie with me. I will do what I can. 
did uh no did you three <laughs> may i get through my question? you did i did proceed objection we are not currently in a court of law son were we in that's a court of think. law that's what you think make a charm roll oh wow he like kind of snorts through his sideways nose a little bit just so you got a fucked up nose and immediately the goodwill that you just curried disappears out the window in toledo that's a compliment oh you're from toledo Mm, suddenly this all makes sense Did you see anyone suspicious enter or leave the back room of the museum yesterday? So I didn't wash my hair this morning. I usually wash my hair in the mornings. I didn't wash it this morning, but I washed it last night. Is that going to be a problem when you're checking for the lights? I didn't see anyone suspicious while we were in the back room. I mean, while we were in the front room. Can you give me a flight check to sort of conceal that that slip of the tongue? Uh, and Devin. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Ooh, okay. So your target number here is six. Do you have enough adversary tokens to try and crank that up? Or do you want to leave that lie at a two? I just gave myself my first adversity token. Ah. I've been a strong roller. Grandpa says I have the wrists of a of a ball player. Indeed, you do. Uh, My grandpa, Chuggy. Chuggy, good friends with Cheppy, of course. They live in different eras, sir. But yes, maybe. My father apologies, of Buggy. Chuggy, father of Buggy, father of Tuggy. Yes. I love that. Um, He sort of like narrows his eyes at you, Tuggy. And it's at this moment that Devin's bag gets a lot lighter and your bag gets a lot heavier. I'm sorry, did you say that you were in the back room of the museum yesterday? Yes, but I said that by accident. I didn't mean to. So you, you, you understand you can't take that. As in my actual word. I'm saying it now. I was. Well, if you're silent, you can't lie. I'm going to turn invisible. Yeah, I'm getting the fuck out of here. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to turn invisible because I don't like this. Devin's A cab. We're out. out <laughs> i am officially we're on out. the side of the church that stands Devin. <laughs> we are we're out okay we're out. okay talk to this crooked nose fuck anymore damn okay <laughs> so Devin, what i want for you to do for me uh i have macros set up where i can roll extra dice to add to your roll i would like you to roll flight because you're trying to escape the situation uh i'm going to say that your target number is six let's say so whatever you roll on flight i'm now going Uh, to add two d4 to with this macro and we're gonna hope for a three or a higher i got three oh and the additional die bring you up to a six so i'm gonna say that in this instance you don't turn full invisible but what happens devin How do, how do your I, powers of obfuscation get you out of this scenario? Uh, well, it's a little bit of it's a little bit of the best of both worlds here. Since I'm one of the most, if not the most unremarkable boy anyone's ever met, I just stand up and walk out. <laughs> yeah. And you nobody absolutely notices do that. or cares. Uh, you feel this like shimmer in the air around you. You make him piss. <laughs> you <laughs> make him piss. 
Make him piss. piss. Make him piss. Make him piss. Make him piss. Do you, do you want to att- <laughs> do you want to attempt to instill a piss shiver in det- yeah. in Agent Carruthers? Cool. Absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna need you to give me a charm roll, but I'm gonna say that this activates your rebellious trait as a teenager, so you'll get a plus three to this. Oh. But you'll also get a plus one to this because I did promise you a plus one on your next charm roll from combing your hair. Oh my god! So that's oh, he's like gonna a, soak his. That's like an eleven. Issued khakis. Uh, so you fully stand up. Can 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 Tough and Tuggy give me brains rolls to see if you can get over the hump of Devin's effect to understand what's happening? Neither of you can. Both of you take adversity <laughs> tokens. Yeah. Man, as, I'm dying. As far as you can tell, Devin fucking disappears. And Agent Crothers, who is like starting to like really lean in to grill you two, just kind of goes, uh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Cold day. Hmm. Anyway. Devin, make him piss harder. <laughs> Squeeze on his belly. Uh, at this point, Devin, I'm going to say you've slipped out of the room, if that's okay with you. Fuck. Uh, he, he starts to go for his notes. Are either of you taking this opportunity to try and uh, release yourselves from the situation? 100%. Yes, absolutely. No, I can't sir. go back. Okay. How are you attempting to get out of here? And are you attempting to invoke your mysterious abilities in order to do so? Mm-hmm, 100%. I will say... You guys, can, you guys can use your abilities in whatever scenario you wish. As long as you can justify it to me, I'll let you roll Okay. Mm, yeah. All right. Feel free to he's be creative. Be, he's down there looking, he's down there looking at his hose, filling his dungarees, <laughs> dripping down into his, d- dipping down through his dickies into his <laughs> black on black Reeboks. Oh, absolutely. And I'm going to get real small, but I don't want to leave. I just want to shrink real small and see how Tuggy gets himself out of this. And the instant I smell something bad, other than government piss, I'm out of the room. Oh, God, but we're... I'm going to stick around for a second and smell the piss, and then I'm going to leave. We as long are... as I don't drown in it. We are so anti-establishment here, and I absolutely love it. So I'm going to ask for a flight roll from you, and I'm also going to add 2d4 to your roll. Uh, I'm going to say... Ooh. I'm getting fucked. <laughs> well, remember, you do have adversity tokens to spend on this, and your total you're going to want to hit is eight. But let's add those two D4. Okay. Uh, you're currently two under your target number. Do you want right. to spend adversity tokens here, or do you want to try and save them? So to use an adversity token in my brain, <laughs> I unclick the blue one or make another one blue. No, you unclick the blue one, you tell me Got how many it. you're spending, and I will add that many to your roll. And I need four. Two. Uh, you two. Need I use two. all two. I gotta get out of here. Okay, yeah. So I wanna, I wanna, I wanna husk that. I wanna huff that piss. Oh, the word piss has been said entirely too many times this stream. Story must be rolled. Huss the stream. Piss. The story must be piss. Enter the stream, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> oh, you guys, my dad watches us. <laughs> hey, Mr. Oh, your Michael. Your dad doesn't pee? Your dad doesn't pee? Come on, <laughs> old man, you pee. pee. Don't be embarrassed. You pee. pee. <laughs> uh, okay, so tough. You instantaneously are just your size one moment and a micro tough the next moment. Mm. which leaves but one single boy. Mm-hmm. As the agent looks back up, do any of you have any idea what was in that back room? Where the hell are the other two? Um, <laughs> what the? <laughs> Slows down. You suck. You got a weird butt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god 
Oh, uh, Tuggy. I, I can't speak for the other two. I am but my own boy. My name is Tuggy Rubcorn, begot of Buggy Rubcorn, begot of Chuggy Rubcorn, begot of Arthur. No I stand name. before you my own <laughs> Rubcorn. Arthur, we just leave Arthur off because, well, I mean, he wasn't, he didn't rhyme with Tuggy. Yeah. Anyway, I stand before you, my own boy, and I'll answer the rest of your questions, but I can't speak for the other two boys. I'm just, I'm one boy. You know what? Tug, go ahead and give me a grit roll. Uh, I'm going to say DC of five. Seven, you, you piece of shit. <laughs> Easily <laughs> enough. Um, you go through the rest of the agent's questions. You tough yes. it out. No. Uh the size of a raisin or two regularly um i'd say number four um and it, it's definitely brighter than the sun but not as bright as like a flashlight well mr rubcorn i thank you for not mysteriously disappearing in the middle of our conversation and uh i would stand up to shake your hand but i think i'm more comfortable sitting at the moment for unspecified <laughs> reasons because he's covered in piss. It smells when you're small. Uh, you're dismissed. You need to drink more water. It's like it's like orange pudding. Just like that, I'm free to go. Yes, you are free to go. Okay. By the way, what's missing? It was a well. It was a statue of some kind. Yeah. What about it? It was an old piece of rock that the Historical Preservation Society seemed to be very attached to. Do you, so do you just, you work for the Historical Society? Um, can you give me a brains roll, please, uh, Senor Tuggy? Five. Five is, I'll say that's a decent enough. Uh, you can tell he's not giving you the full truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can tell that maybe he's a little more invested in this statue than he would seem. Sir, you asked me many questions. Can I ask you a question? I don't see why not. Go ahead, Mr. Rubcorn. If you... If you could do anything, if you, like, won the lottery. If you won the lottery, and you could do anything you wanted. You know, anything at all. Would you still be looking for a statue, you think? Odd question. Yeah, I don't know. It's just a, you know, it's a normal question. I take my job very seriously, Mr. Repcorn. Uh -huh. It's a career that I've worked very hard to get. And while, okay. I say, and while I'll say searching for a statue in a backwater town in Ohio isn't the most glamorous of locales and occupations, it's still my job. So if I did win the lottery, I think I'd focus on unfucking my schnoz. After which, maybe I'd buy a new pair of shoes. But I'd still be using them to do this job. Wow. That told me a lot about yourself. Can I ask another, another question? Yes, but you're trying my patience, so make it quick. Do you have a son named Owen Wilson? How do you know about Owen? I, I just was curious. <laughs> Something told me that, you know, sometimes a broken nose is genetic. You leave my son's nose out of this. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know what I was invoking when I brought up your son. It's all right. He's a good boy. He just takes after his father in the schnoz department. And I regret that every day. Well, I had a good time talking to you. I don't have a lot of uh, fully uh, capable of seeing uh, male role models in my life. And if I could, I'd like to get your number to call you later. You're a very odd little corn goblin. And I will say that you are somewhat amusing. I will consider this. 
but okay. please, I have another group of students to interview. So you just are you gonna write it down and give it to me later, or can you, I have a good memory. <laughs> please remove yourself from my office, Mr. Repcorn. Just say it once, and I'll never have to look it up again. Hold on, I have to one moment, please. I did write this down somewhere, actually. One eight hundred FBI JK six nine. That's going to be area code nine three seven. Okay. Oh and shit. Then the rest of the phone number is eight six seven. Oh. Five three zero nine. Oh so wow. Just to run through that one more time, that is nine three seven. Nine three seven. Eight six seven. Eight six seven. Five three zero nine. Five three zero nine. Thank you. I run outside. I'm done. Okay. So <laughs> I imagine that you managed to extricate yourself from the situation, uh, tough boyman. Yes, I'm just looking up what's going on in Dayton, Ohio. See, when you're running numbers in Toledo, you got to know the area code of every town. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I didn't leave the room until I got a big old whiff of that piss. Yeah, you you now are confident you could you could pick this man's piss out of a crowd. I could smell piss like a bloodhound smells man's piss. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Piss. Um, <laughs> Now, a uh, question for you guys in real life. What time is it on your end? Because I do remember we have a... Okay. Eastern. In that case, are we all right doing one last thing before we wrap up this evening? Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, but just allow me to check. Is there anything you want to accomplish before we round out tonight's session? Because I think we've established some some plot threads currently. If I run into Devin or uh, my good friend Tuff, I don't know if we're friends, he, he said that weird stuff to me. Um, I'd like to say that I found out the name of the man's son and his phone number. And if we need to, we can threaten him now. Just call oh. him up on the phone. It'll happen to your son. It'll happen to your son, Owen. Who is this? It's going to happen to your son, Owen. What? I'll scare anybody. Movie of trivia, Royal Tenenbaums came out 20 years ago today. Oh, how did I know that? And then my nose bleeds and I black out for a second. <laughs> it did, though. It's the last movie he wrote. It's, it's very good. <clears throat> what are we talking about? Um. Uh. I'm going to say that you guys are having this conversation on the front steps of the school uh, during the recess period between classes, uh, sort of discussing what was discussed in that room moments ago. Um, and as you guys went outside, it's undeniable that the weather has changed. The sky above you boils with these heavy swelling clouds that have almost a sickly greenish tint to them, ever so slightly amidst the dark grays. But it doesn't seem like these this heaving cloud cover is ready to let loose its rain anytime soon. It gives a feeling of being trapped almost like this great heavy blanket weighing over this entire town. Uh, and you can see some paces away from where you're sitting, there is a man standing on the sidewalk just outside the school. Uh, you see a skinny gentleman uh, in a tie-dye shirt that comes down only to about where his rib cage ends, uh, as well as a ratty pair of denim shorts and sandals. Uh, he has a very long red beard, which is immaculately like braided over itself into a long rectangular sheet and ends in several glass like chandelier danglies. 
uh, as well as having just long matted tresses of red hair coming from his head. Like it's immaculate beard, nasty, dirty hair. Uh, and he is looking directly at the three of you and waving. Afternoon, children. Watch the skies. There's a big storm coming. And I will say that is where we conclude today's story. Aww. Oh. Uh oh. You I can't just imagine that was a ginger and call it quits. <laughs> Tell me. His I just name. imagine it was the lead singer of Anthrax. <laughs> <laughs> kind of that same energy, but like mix a little bit of like a dwarf that never left the seventies. Scott, mm. Ian, what is his name? Ian. Why do I... Ian's. It's Scott. Ian Scott. It's Ian. Ian Scott. It's he's a two first name man. Yeah, and Ian is one of them. <laughs> it's like my friend Greg John. Oh, story. my other friend Brandon Brendan. That's so, uh, I hope everybody had fun today. I had a great time. I had a hell of a great time. time. A story I... of a time because we are in hell as we speak. We never left. Mm -mm. Born in hell, raised in hell. The island of Joe is no Die more, but <laughs> we're absolutely still down there. Um, I personally I want to thank blast. everyone for coming out and watching. Everyone who's hung out with us. Oh Let's my gosh, the, yeah. The goosefix emojis out there. Ooh, I love them. I love seeing all these names from the uh, the Story Must Be Rolled Discord. And uh, shout out to some of my, uh, my fellow goblins that are infesting the chat alongside our beloved uh, 522 and beyond. Oh. Ooh. The story must be rolled. Oh, the story, story must, must absolutely be rolled. Story must be the rolled. story must be rolled. The Thank story you, must everyone. be rolled. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks.